In the old three in the big bill tank. We should remember them. No, we have the the video to do that for us. (laughs) So yes, yeah. yeah. Um, Due Uh, to mine and Sandy's. uh, (laughs) No, don't play me. Okay, I won't implicate you, even though it's <laughs> yeah. entirely your fault. We we deleted the intro theme song. I, I should have really added it back earlier, but only noticed when I pressed mix. the pressed the button, and yeah. it kind of just showed my face instead of yours. It's like that's not how it works. Yeah. Anyway, we're mostly back and we're mostly working, and yeah, it's, oh, it's clean. Welcome in to here. Bilge Tank Fifty One, mm. and Paul's made his triumphant return from EMF camp. Um, yep, no doubt knackering. Still in one piece, red arms. It's pretty good. All good. Show. Um, yeah. And back to the the bill shank, which we have slightly modified, tidied up, and made all clean, shiny. Yeah, I'm Question just is, a cream. I am impressed. I am impressed with our efforts. We seek validation from you. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It's so clean. And there's a porthole. <laughs> <laughs> it needs more art, though. We need to put more art up. There does need to be more art. Yeah. There. Yeah. And we're looking slightly more it's majestic. Also, it's also that thing on the wall. Everyone, gun show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no gun. Look, we'd be like majestic. I can, I can do this though. Look, <laughs> majestic EV, EV block arms like this, which you know, wide angle lenses, man. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we've got stuff to talk about this week. Um, there is the new Pi USB and Ethernet boot stuff, Booting. where you can actually boot a Pi three without an SD card at all, which is basically magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing things you can do when you have the use of a chip fab. Yeah, when you can you can get your last minute firmware <laughs> written into the chip. But yeah, Gordon's put a lot of work into that, so there is a couple of blog posts on the Pi site. Da, 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 da. About using USB mass storage, and then part two using Ethernet. And we're going to take you through some of the quirks of that. I'm sure you will live demo. I set up the USB mass storage one, but we looked at the instructions, the Ethernet one, and they just went on yeah, and, tad, on and on and on. Tad complex. I think they are mm. intended at people who have the infrastructure already in place for booting over Internet. Or oh, Ethernet, because uh, it's, it's sort of for installations where you've got multiple Pies all booting the same image, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. But yeah, we'll sort that out. Yeah. Not so great for your home setup where you've yeah, got one the Pi. Ne- this is the network boot tutorial. It's quite. Um, it's involved. It's quite involved, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's always involved when you look at it, isn't it? True. Like, they were looking at, we're going to show you the kind of c faxy thing in a bit, and the Guardian and Tech Radar. The Guardian did an article thing about saying how a Raspberry Pi has been used to resurrect um, c fax <laughs> <laughs> Does it have the quiz? And it involves using What's a command line to install a few things, and they said, well, you need a degree in computer science for that. And it's like it's just typing, very accurate typing. <laughs> yeah, copy, copy, paste. We're copy here to paste. get over this kind of fear. That's what it's all about. True that, very true. Yeah, um, Sam's also got a demo of something we saw, um, which we're going to just show as a, it's a blinked example, basically, yeah. with a bit, yeah. little bit of reading APIs through Blink Python. It's gone down incredibly well, hasn't it? A lot of people have been doing some really cool little things with it. Yeah, it's, it's like really cool. the, the de facto mini notifier. Yeah. For I think the simplicity of it actually forces you into thinking into really creative ways of using it. Yeah, yeah. yeah Because it's just eight so. pixels, then, you know. What can you do with yeah. just eight pixels? Shall we do the USB boot demo? <laughs> well, it's got a demo set up. The, the okay. fantastical thing. That's yeah. what that lead was that I lost down there. <laughs> We've, ah, we've got power supplies on hand now. Uh, so really fully teched up. Look at this. What steps do people have to go through to get to the stage where they can do this? Yeah. So I largely up? ignored the steps on the forums because I previously had a, a setup where I was booting from a USB disc, not like this, but an actual SSD connected via one of our adapters that we sell on the store. Yeah. Um, I previously had my setup booting from that. Uh, I had my hard drive on the USB port, and I had a, an SD card in the SD card slot. So the SD card would handle the first stage of boot and then off out to the hard drive which is lovely nice and big and I can fit all my development stuff in there and I've got lots of room to work and it's it's my development pie it sits on my desk to one side and gets used all the time so I had that set up already working so my first attempt was to get that booting without the SD card directly from the hard drive unfortunately the boot doesn't work with everything so in my particular setup the hard drive wasn't supported it either didn't start up fast enough or there were other problems with it so I had to resort instead to using this which is just um, a memory stick I found on a shelf which I um, 
plugged into my computer, and much like you would initialize uh, an SD card, I wrote the contents of Jesse Light to this memory card. Uh, and after writing the contents of Jesse Light, I went in and edited the um, the, the boot config text to not config text command line .txt to make sure we can get the the installation instructions up here, which tell you exactly what to do to make sure that it actually targeted the. Um, correct partition because when you boot from an SD card it looks for MMC block OP whatever it happens to be whereas when you boot from an S, uh, USB device it looks for dev SDA2 and so it has to be looking for the right partition on boot. Yeah it's more looking at the kind of one time view stuff and all that but you know so you can set it up a good explanation yeah. too. You can set it up from an image. You can set it up from an image. <coughs> Um, and then you can make some minor modifications. So I actually plugged this into my running Pi, loaded up the file system, and made the other change that needs to be made, which is mentioned somewhere. No. Oh. oh. What on earth happened there? <laughs> Did you just reboot your service? <laughs> Bizarre. I, I put my hand near it, it just rebooted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is a little bit... Perfect. This is all the stuff. What they tell you to do for the normal preparation of an SD card or uh, an external device is to plug it in, Set it up following these guys, which are all a little bit kind of involved. I mean, you're talking about actually preparing a file system, making partitions and stuff with individual commands on the command line, uh, and then actually copying your the contents of your SD card across onto the USB device, which it works, fair enough, but you can just image it from a, a downloaded um, Jesse Light image or a downloaded Raspbian image, um, but not a noobs image because it won't be ready and set up to go. Uh, I then plugged it into my Pi and then fixed this little step here, which is just changing FS tab to make sure that it mounts the two partitions on the USB drive at boot up and doesn't try and mount the SD card. Right. Uh, then plugging it in. Uh, but have you done the thing? Is the thing uh, we got the, to one-time the, fuse? The one-time fuse. There's two one-time fuses actually. And once they're set, they <laughs> cannot ever be unset. Yeah, one-time program will. Which is so. it's not a big deal because you can just plug an SD card in and always boot from the SD card. The one-time programmable fuses handle the enabling of booting from USB mm -hmm. and most likely network and all the other stuff as well, and also a timeout delay, um, upping the timeout delay from two seconds to five seconds when booting from USB for. Um, USB devices are a bit sluggish starting up, so it'll wait five seconds before trying to read the device yeah. rather cool. than two. So can we get the, right, yeah, can we get the, the display up? up? Both of those, yeah. Can, can we get Yeah, we should have it plugged in, so... Okay, we want to show that we it's show not got an SD card. Go on. We want point to prove that incontrovertibly. Uh, hang on. Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da. You probably show it on the screen, but close up. Because <laughs> obviously... Yeah, you know, makes it. Uh, well, makes it real. I have to zoom in. I can't get any further. Oh, I'm no. going to unplug it from the HDMI cable. I'll do. I'll do your favour. Okay. Where, where are we? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, ah. <laughs> Down about. <laughs> right about. Right about. Ah, I'm not used to this. So we've got okay. no SD card, and it's definitely got the USB stick Absolutely in the other no end. Absolutely no SD card in there. USB stick in the other end. And there can never really be more than one USB stick that ugly in the world, so <laughs> it must be the same pie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Quite. So plugging it in now. Still no SD card in there. You can cool. quite clearly see that on camera. And in comes the power. Da, 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 da. Ah. Uh, you'll see a very, uh, you'll see a boot delay when I plug this in because mm -hmm. obviously it has to wait until it can read the um, USB device. Whereas when you boot from an SD card, it's a little bit quicker. So it will miss a couple of beats and then. Where is it? Is it happening? It's flashing the, it's flashing the thing. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey. There we go. No, no SD still, card involved. No SD card. HDMI cable going to there. Uh, I can I can <coughs> unplug this HDMI cable now at the stage boot and show that yep, that is in fact the pie that we're booting. Not that cool. I think anyone needs this <laughs> this ridiculous amount of proof and, and double checks to. Yeah, it's just to prove it. Yeah. So it won't happen with the zero, with the B plus, with the two. They can only boot with an SD card. But you can have a minimal SD card that just has one file on it. So you format the SD card to FAT32, put one file in it that Gordon's lovingly prepared, and then it will boot from USB or Ethernet. And the great thing about this is you can then just have a data center or like Mythic Beasts are doing, they're going to set up some kind of host, will host a Pi thing 
and they can just deploy operating systems and update them remotely. Oh, nice. From a central service. So I use the um, USB setup with a memory card because when I stuff something up, I can always just unplug the USB device, boot from the memory card, yep. and fix it, and then connect it all back together again. So it works. Mm -hmm. Well, it's quite well having both um, for USB. So you've cool. actually got an SSD connected up with a... Uh, yeah, but using a, uh, an SD card as the first stage yeah. of the boot. So you've got like a, a SATA to USB cable yeah, or something yeah. like that? It, it works reasonably well. It does occupy a USB port and so will this. And with only four USB ports, if you're doing anything um, particularly interesting with your Pi, you may find it's somewhat constrained. But I can daisy chain a hub off there for your keyboard and mouse, can't you? Yeah, it should be fine. You got the Bluetooth as well, but I think oh, mainly sorry, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. So it could be useful when we start set, setting up our continuous in integration server. Quite so. In fact, um, clusters uh, would be another yeah potentially interesting setup if they all fire up and boot off the same network image and all start running the same code. I must uh, talk to um, do the oscilloscopes. <laughs> Bit scope. No. Bit scope. Yeah. Bit scope. We're going to get Bruce, the rest of a um, Bruce, maybe. Going to get the rest of a 20 cluster pi thing off them and mount it in our IKEA LAC table for our LAC rack. <laughs> and then that will be our oh, pi history, every pi yeah. ever, to see if our code works. Um, yeah, pie, totally going to happen. Every yeah. OS revision recently. Yep. Cool. Cool. That would be great. Will we do the, the tube status thing there? Yeah, let's I'll go for the tube status thing. So, what so was this the inspiration? Was, um, so, this was. Um, a guy called Daniel Harper tweeted um, this little vine of um, something that he put together with Blinked. Um, so Bl for people that don't know, Blinked is um, our tiny little... Um, I don't know if you want to... There was one around here. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got, got it. Yeah. Can we get the close-up? Ah, oh, right. Close-up. Um, I don't want to destroy your big reveal. Yeah, so Blinked oh. is um, a little... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Blinked as a little um, eight pixel uh, RGB um, AP one hundred two LED stick. Um, Not even holding out to the camera now. And we had a we had a special bilge tank episode where we tried to come up with as many different um, fifty <laughs> ideas, as many different We've got some demos of those still of Blinked, running in the background. Um, yeah, some of which are actually running there. just back yep. there. The Larson um, scanner, a nice um, hue. And it's showing red. Cheer lights and yeah. ah. um, if you tweet hashtag, hashtag bilge, bilge, tank, bilge tank, then that one should flash. Yeah. Right. So um, your I'll, head's I'll, now going to cover them up for the rest. <laughs> <of it. laughs> yeah. I'll duck down a little bit yes. just, just because someone's bound to. But do we'll, that we'll be showing those off at Make Fair Berlin for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice uh, little demo stand. Yeah. yeah. So this guy Daniel um, put together a really nice little <sighs> example. Um, which is basically looking at the um, the status of eight of the London Underground lines, um, mm -hmm. and they all have the colours that correspond to the the colour on the tube map for that line. Um, if they flash, I think if they flash yellow, um, there's a, a disruption in the service. Disruption. Yeah. Um, if they flash red, then I think there's like a a complete disruption. Dragon on the line or um, something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mewtwo spotted. Yeah, the guys with shovels are out. Um, <laughs> Normal train service in my career. Um, yeah, so he's basically just got a sheet of um, paper with the lines written on it uh, to kind of diffuse the colours of the blinks and to tell you which lines are which. That, that's um, really good, that's dead simple. He was, after we retweeted it, he was kind enough to put the code online for this. Um, so if, if you want to set this up yourself, then you can uh, clone his GitHub repo. Cool. Um, <laughs> there you go. So yeah, so he's got the um, he's got the code there, and it's it's really easy to install it. Um, That's linked down below the video on YouTube as well, yep, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the ready? YouTube comments. So. Um, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Ready? Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. So we've put together a little Pi Zero here with. Um, a little wooden case that I made um, and it's got all of the tube lines marked out and it's got cutouts for the for the pixels and if we plug it in 
kill the USB one. So the great thing about this demo is it uses the public API of Transport for London. Yep. And it's really nice they have this there with the intention that people can use it exactly yeah. like this. Yeah. So we've just got a Raspberry Pi official Wi-Fi dongle plugged in. And if we plug the power in... So it'd be a great little thing to kind of mount up in your London office to say, you're not getting home tonight, you might as well stay at work late. Yeah. And then you can have a man in the middle attack. <laughs> where you can just fake the data. <laughs> just fake all the lines. Yeah. Yeah. We need Andy on the project tonight. <laughs> Which line's he on? <laughs> Gonna have to wait for it to... I've had to add a bit of a delay so that it has time to connect to the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. um, before it actually starts up, because if you don't do that, then basically you just get red lights flashing. We should, we should author a um, wait for Wi-Fi Wi-Fi <laughs> module, which yeah, is just a module yeah. that does nothing but have yeah, wait for Wi-Fi. Sleep wi 30, yeah. Um, come on. Well, there must be something that can check internet connectivity status already. Yeah, there surely will be. You can nothing, just ping, nothing quite so succinct. Yeah, just ping Google or something like that. Mm. We might just sit and loop until oh, it come on. That. Improve the code so it doesn't kind of try to do a status when it has no data. <laughs> mm. And yeah, there is that make your code tolerant of lack of network. Which this this <laughs> this little fellow this little fellow. Maybe maybe tap it a bit. This little oh, fellow is not yeah. tolerant of anything. Hey! Woo -hoo. Superb. It's alive! Cool. Oh, it looks really nice from an angle because of the way the um, the lights are lighting the inner edge of the wood. Yeah. It looks really cute. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It looks quite good from, oh, from the nice. side. <laughs> so you can see that he's um, programmed in all of the colours for the for the different lines that match the colours on the map, so that's quite nice. Um, and I've actually used the um, the typeface that's used on the London Underground well, <laughs> for, the, for the text. Because Ask a bill. You are oh. such a pedant. It's, it's called Johnson. Johnson, yeah. Um, oh, it's a, it's a version of uh, Gil Sands, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Eric Gill, quite the party person. So Also design fonts. Yeah, so if, if Daniel, if you <coughs> send us your address, then we'll send you this Pi Zero in the case um, as a reward for your, um, your amazing example with Blinked. Mm -hmm. um, but again, put, putting overlays on Blinked or the Unicorn hat is not that hard. You don't need to over-engineer it. A bit of paper or a bit of A4 yeah. and laser printing is good. You can obviously extend it with laser cut things, with vinyl cutters, all that kind of stuff. 3D but printed one the build. Yeah. We now have a working 3D printer in the building. I saw it. I saw it running. Yeah. It was printing a, an SD card holder. <laughs> <laughs> For all your SD card holder yeah. needs. And we found coffee flavoured filament. Adafruit just started stocking it. <laughs> So we're going to get ourselves some. Totally stash. troll people by running it in the kitchen with the coffee smell wafting out. We all go running in there after coffee, and it's just it's three D printed a sign that says ha ha ha. <laughs> Pint insulation, little coffee symbol that smells. Why don't they have bacon flavored <laughs> filament though? It's coming. It seems like the obvious one. Yeah. Guaranteed to go bacon <clears throat> everything. Mm. I did actually cook bacon in an office once. That was that was interesting. <laughs> right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and reboot this. Cool. Yeah, so the next thing on the agenda is um, Phil's going to demo our uh, connected lights that we've got in the bilge tank now. So, what's this all about? Um, so, we have. Uh, Could you go roving camera if I lean back? Yeah, let's, 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 go. let's try for the roving camera. What's that? A rover of camera? Can't be a very smelly the, one. Yeah, the battery may die here. Um, so, I may just have to zoom in. the battery earlier? It was very odd. I think yeah, it's, I just, it's been left to run out. It's mm. a USB, so I could probably get a battery pack. Oh, oh. the fourth wall! Oh, the camera is panning oh. too fast. That so is dead. Yeah, it's dead. Uh, we'll plug it in over here, maybe? <laughs> that works. Works. Okay, so the there may be a slight delay while we actually. Hey, wait, no, it's a USB, isn't it? Yes. Plug plug it USB. Hang on. Hang on. Wait for it, Sandy. Look, look at the other end of this. <laughs> Now we can plug it into the pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's just madness. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was away at EMF camp when I just got kind of phone calls from Sandy and text saying, Paul, don't watch the bilge tank. Don't watch the bilge tank. Wait, 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 wait. It turns out they were, they were cutting so portholes and things. What's this one? It's not switched on. Why is it not switched on? Is it switched uh, on? Is this even going to work? That's the question. It's coming on. Now power on. I've got no signal. Is the Pi enough power to power that camera? No. I can see a light, you can see a red light. The other question is, is this thing even working? Is this or thing even working? Or are we going to make complete muppets of ourselves? Oh <sighs> no, I think it is. 
No, no, it's not. It's not working again. It's not. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's go back to USB extension cable yeah. idea. That was a good idea. <laughs> Oh dear, what's a bill shot without technical work? Right. So anyway, I was at EMF camp making my <laughs> titanium spork from a sheet of titanium. Very good workshop. Um, you take a sheet of titanium and you hammer out a spork. So I made this little travel spork here and it's actually it's quite sharp. I can quite happily cut a banana with that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Bananas well run out okay. being super strong. I can stop doing terrible anecdotes now. Yeah, so we've got... We have our port tool that uh, Phil and I made to do... So the porthole <laughs> runs an MQTT server. Behind here there's a Pi with Unicorn Hat on it and it's running an MQTT server which serves um, out light statuses to all the other lights in the build shank. So um, what's MQTT? MQTT, I don't know what it stands for but it's like a very simple messaging system. Uh, the idea being that you can, it's just a transport, it's a way of getting messages delivered ac out across your network. Uh, so you can build on top of that whatever protocol you desire, and we built a lighting control protocol on top of that. So our backlight here on Displayatron, when we change it, it actually emits a message or publishes a message to the MQTT server on Porthole. Um, then Porthole syndicates that out to the modem lighting down here and the Beidou light up here, which means that as we change this backlight colour, it's changing the colours of the lights everywhere in the bilge tank. So we're just cycling through to purple now. You can see that going, wee. Oh, look at that hot pink. Camera panning too fast. <laughs> and now we're going into full on red. red so the colours, are, the colours are slightly different across all of these products because they use different lights and they're not corrected to be identical. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, they work really well. And I'm just cycling. Can you get a zoom on the backlight control? Oh, okay, yeah. Every yellow. So even the colour, oh, nice. Even the colour of the backlight on the display. You might need to zoom out a bit. There you go. Nice. So even the backlight colour on here matches the lighting and you can page through and change the brightness. So I could turn all of the lights right down in the build shank. Cool. So do we have a uh, code example with this? We will do when we've got the thing to stop breaking, Crashing. basically. <laughs> I will write an MQTT light and control plugin for Displayatron hat that will do this but stuff. But you've added a, a blinked example for it. Just go, just go. Yes, there is um, a blinked <laughs> example for MQTT. Cool. Uh, which gives you like a very basic, whoop, a very basic protocol for controlling your blinked lighting. So yeah, that's that's build shank lights all networked together, and that's like a basic demo of home automation, really, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is. That would be how you automate your home lighting. Something we're getting more into, definitely. Cool. Um, and there's no way, no reason you couldn't connect that through to Siri in the same way. You basically have your voice control running on one Pi, um, and then you run your home bridge server on that Pi, and then that just syndicates out the lighting data to all of the lights in your room, which are all subscribed to the same MQTT server. Yep, it's all data in it. It's all data. Yeah. Kind cool. of like IRCC, uh, uh, IRC for, um, for things. devices and things. Mm. That would be a good way to put it. Cool. Unfortunately, the controller keeps losing its connection, so need to fix that. But mm. oh, so that's, that's, oh, okay. that's the example. Can we get that up? Mm. Um, mm. So the, this is the uh, the MQTT example that Phil's put together for Blinked. Um, so that's in the repo now. Um, so that should give you a basic idea of what it takes to get the that kind of thing up and running. Um, this actually subscribes to a, a public MQTT server, uh, which means that if you set this up, uh, then someone remotely can control your blink. So this will work over the internet as well. Fortunately, there's no way you can you can display anything offensive on a blink. So this is a bit like cheer lights. Oh, unless you're really good with Morse code. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, <no. coughs> and, and really fast at typing. Yeah, God, that's offensive. <laughs> Actually, I'm starting to think about um, getting that amateur radio license. I noticed Lee Moore had got hers. Really? Yeah. Ah. Just so you can uh, mess about with transmitters and things. Because even when you're duking it out, they, they like you to have a license for it. And it helps if you're uh, an approved <laughs> amateur radio technician. So, yeah, we could be hamming it up. We could yeah. all go for it. We could all kind of get our ham certification. 
Let's just move around it, with radios and talk to each other. <laughs> okay, Paul, what we're looking Paul. at next. Um, so this is a chap called Joel Collins, um, who has um, created what he calls the world's most over-engineered lamp. Um, oh, I read this blog post. This was amazing. Uh, it was clear, uh, detailed, and yeah, very over-engineered. Yeah, so very, you can tell he's doing a, you can tell he's doing a PhD. Um, <laughs> Because he, he certainly knows how to write up this kind of thing. Um, so basically what he's done is he's taken a unicorn hat um, and he's put together a lamp that has um, a flask interface that he's built mm -hmm. um, for controlling it. So this is the this is the web app um, for controlling it. Wow. Um, the, uh, and thermal lamp? Yeah, he's got all of these different modes. So the thermal one is basically... Um, yeah, so he's got he's got one where you can control the colour of it. Um, the thermal one is basically different colour temperatures. <coughs> so you can choose it based on black body radiation temperature. Yeah. <laughs> um, Everyone does that, surely. Yeah. Actually, no, IKEA they do yeah. actually put put the radiation spectrum on the boxes oh, in Kelvin. <laughs> um, it's, it's a it's a thing. It's a standard a thing. thing. He's got flickery candle. Can you play has, that? Uh, yeah. That's when I played it, you couldn't really see the flicker all that well. Oh, okay. oh you can you actually can, see it. Yeah, you, you can see it on the wall. Scroll yeah. a little bit so everyone else can. Yeah. There's gentle candle. Yeah, gentle candle. That's nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, he's got a uh, one that kind of cy cycles through different hues. Um, Ooh. Oh no, it's a, that's that's a kind of fading one. It's TARDIS. That's not dissimilar yeah. to the kind of patterns we've had running in the back of a build shank when it was all on auto. Um, it's got a rainbow mode. Yeah. Which is exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. um, that's quite clever actually. The reflection knocks down the brightness. So you can actually see the colour more yeah. clearly. <laughs> and the wall does, obviously. Different rainbow. Um, I think the the most intriguing one is this one where he's um, he's actually made a graphic equaliser. Um, so in the past we've tried to do this um, with uh, fat DAC. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, like piping out the audio with fat DAC. And you've only been able to get um, it to work with CAM files, not through yeah, the OS mixer. Yeah. So we've only been able to get it to work with WAV files. Um, that are then read through Python, and the the audio data are extracted and then pushed back out um, to the speaker. Um, audio in Linux is a bit of a nightmare. Um, <laughs> Just gets clear. Has he done it? He has, but I'm not quite sure how he's done it. Have um, you got a yeah, PhD in it though? <laughs> Maybe so that's the difference. Maybe you need a PhD. I've got a PhD, Paul. Have you? Yeah. Has <laughs> he got I'm, a better PhD? I'm, I'm Dr. Sandy. Dr. Sandy? Yeah. What's your PhD in? In microbiology. Okay, that's probably not so relevant then. Yeah. That wasn't the particular piece of human knowledge you push for. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is really nice. I don't know. That's really responsive. Yeah. Um, so like I say, I don't really know how he's done it. He's... He, he has written up a little document that's got an explanation of how he's done it. Okay. The, the problem is that he's not put in there how he's routed the audio. Okay. Um, which is kind of the key thing. Um, that was the bit that was. So I think we're going to have to get back in touch with him and ask him exactly how he how he did that. But yeah, it's um, altogether it's a really lovely project. Um, he's also got it set up as a kind of um, ambi light for his TV as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's really good. Yeah, um, and then he says nice things about the unicorn hat, yeah. which we like. Yeah, it's kind of saying it's great for software people, which is like, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Brilliant. Yep. Next up. Yeah, Teletext yeah, is back. back. Yeah. Cool. Woo. Yeah. So for anyone that's, that's awesome. under the age of thirty, they probably won't have any clue about what CFAX or Teletext were. Um. Essentially, it was like a, a kind of news service. Before we um, had the internet. And you could <laughs> select different pages. Um, so, yeah, it was very much like a website. Um, Bamboozle. Like a, like a news website. Um, but they had like 
Did they have games and stuff on it as well? Yeah, Bamboozle. Kind it's of. a quiz. Yeah. Was yeah. Bamboozle on CFAX or? But it was all based on more or less kind of BBC graphics, isn't it? BBC micro-level graphics. <laughs> and what they did is inside the composite video signal, they had a subcarrier which carried this data, and then your TV decodes it into these very, very retro graphics. And I think the subcarrier cycles through 999 pages. Well, it starts at page zero, which is the index, and that tells you which other pages to go to. <laughs> but you actually have to type the numbers in because there's no hyperlinking yet. It hasn't been invented. Or it's in a research project in DARPA or something. An <laughs> index system for it, yeah. Maybe readable sense. But one function they had was something called reveal, which I think just take, changed the colour of some text. So you do the quiz by having the quiz and pressing reveal to to show the answers. Yeah. yeah. French folks. Change it from black and white. Folks. So what they've got is they've got some source of pages on the internet and then they use the Raspberry Pi to inject the CFAX data into the composite signal. It's <coughs> amazing. And so they have things like they have it sure. resurrected Usual with articles on how to tune a ukulele and the Guardian have picked it up. And this is what I was ranting about earlier where they were saying typing in command lines is too hard. I'm just going to say it right now. We need an ad block plug in on this. Yeah. Because, <laughs> oh my uh, god. Yeah, there you go. There's, there's still up instructions. Yeah. Uh, this is the bit that needs a PhD, apparently. <laughs> apparently, so does using this tablet. Yeah. Nah, it's, it's, it just wants to be helpful. <laughs> I, I'm helpful. I'm doing a I'm doing mm. thing. So, yeah, anyway, this is, this is just a cool little niche thing that's. At EMF, they had by the bar. They had a BBC running a Twitter client for the event, and it's just nice to see these things. Right? <laughs> these limited formats That's producing great. interesting stuff. Cool. So, if anyone gets that set up, let us know. I don't think we have any CRTs left, unfortunately. So we need go. to dig one out. We could, in theory, get one from um, like the British Art Foundation or somewhere like that. That's true. Yeah. We we would get a CRT, and it would go to a good call. Yep. Cool. Yep. Um, so we had a visit on Monday from Josh. I don't know what his surname is. Do you know what his surname is? <coughs> no, Josh. no. I can't even remember his first um, name, but he was lovely. No, he was lovely. He's also and known as All About Code. Yeah. Um, at All About Code. At All Underscore About yeah, Underscore true, yeah. Code. Um, cool. Generally so, full of ideas. Yeah, Josh is um, 12 years old and he's already written a very extensive Python library. Um, he's put together ideas for um, kind of starter kits for the Raspberry Pi for different um, different types of projects, and um, so like a robot kit and um, a kind of basic one that's similar to our kind of Explorer Hat Pro parts kit. And I can't mm -hmm. remember what the other one was. On the, edu the Cam Jam edu kits or something. Yeah, kind of yeah. on that on that kind of theme. I want yep. that line but um, much more closely integrated with a Python library so everything kind of meshes together. Yep. So you get your kit and you get your starter Python library and the two uh, are both kind of created in perfect harmony. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, so we a solid idea. Yeah, Josh uh, spent the day here and he was kind of um, spending a bit of time with Phil kind of um, learning about how to build Python libraries and the way that Phil does it. Cool. Um, spent a bit of time down in the workshop learning about how to solder things and how to put kits together and that kind of thing. Yep. Um, but he was telling us about this really cool thing called Pie Bakery. Um, so Pie Bakery is, um, I think, a JavaScript program. It's I yeah, apparently all written in JavaScript, I believe. I um, still haven't looked into it in any depth, but if it's JavaScript, it means that I've got half a chance of understanding it. <laughs> yeah, it looks very similar to Scratch in terms of the way that it works and the way that it's laid out. Um, but essentially the function of it is to um, set up SD cards for the Raspberry Pi with particular configurations. Um, so doing things like configuring the, the Wi-Fi, um, setting up a VNC server. Um, I was doing this recently and it was an utter pain. Yeah, so this would have been the neck. massively useful. So this um, slipstreams the configuration into a new image and kind of writes a new SD card. Or if the yeah. SD card's been pre configured, detects that and allows you to modify it. Yeah, as far as Fantastic. I understand. 
um, which is quite cool. Yes, yeah, so it's yeah. very cool. Um, I don't know why we've not heard of it because it seems like the kind of thing that a lot of people. I heard it mentioned would be on Twitter, but only it. very, very recently. I think it's been in on the down low, except for kind of doing the rounds at jams for a while, and then it right. sort of hit the ground running, so to speak. I mean, it's got to the point where it's really mint and really nice, well documented, well presented, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, before yep. before going out there, which is um, quite unusual in this sort of um, industry, I suppose. Yeah, there's nothing quite like it, and it does do just sensible, useful stuff, like the VNC servers, like running scripts. It's the kind of the tool that Raspberry Pi should have come with in the first place. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some dressing for that would have been good. Because I mean, I think the terminal is, is is kind of a barrier for a lot of people. Um, there's something about just kind of going into the terminal and typing stuff in, like Paul was saying earlier with the CFAX thing. Um, there's something that kind of scares people about that, so I think having this kind of thing is... is well, even saying the ST images, for for the workshop I was booting up a Pi, running a load of scripts on it, um, over SSH, and then, yeah, saving the outcome of it. In fact, now I was doing it for each Pi, so this would have been, this would have yeah. saved me yeah. ages. Yeah. 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 <sighs> anyway, yeah. Uh, so the final thing is a new product that we have in the shop. Oh, um, I haven't seen this for a long time, but we got one of these we from Kickstarter, Kickstarter yeah, yeah. and I put it together uh, so it's months and months and months ago now. My robot. My robot. Mm. And I was, I was seriously impressed by how you could basically set it up on Wi-Fi and then you connect into it from your computer and you get a web page where you drag and drop commands, uh, if I remember correctly. To actually program it and make it drive cool. around, it's a really nice piece of kit. Cool. Look in the box. I don't know how how close to the one that I played with this one is, but just for the looks of it, we're going to get some close action. Oh, it hasn't yep. got the um, eighty. Well, what was it that sat on there? So you got a couple of the stepper motors in there, a servo. Yep. So these are the air conditioning stepper motors that are cheap, cheerful, mm -hmm. and quite useful. Um. You've got a handy little bag of silica gel. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Sure um, the main board looks slightly revised. Oh, it does a, come with the um, Arduino as well. Uh, you've got a GST connected uh, AA battery holder. Quite nice. A quadruple A. Let's put it together, put it together, come, go, go. Super quick. <laughs> quadruple AA. Uh, Is that eight A's? <laughs> <laughs> quadruple AA. Uh, yeah. yeah. More of the buttons. Something like that. Um, you've got a servo. I presume okay. that's is that for moving the, the servos pen? move the pen up and down. Yeah. Right? It's, I remember oh, right. that's an ESP A two six six right there, isn't yeah. it? That isn't how the um, the whole thing serves up the the Wi Fi page. It also updates over Wi Fi, which I thought was quite cool. Cool. Uh, it sets little, up its own access point. Nice little instruction. You can booklet. see the, these little. Oh, I can't really see them here, but these little switches one side or the other so it can detect that it's bumped into things. <laughs> what else is on there? Is it motor driver and piezo? Yeah, it's got yeah. piezo, on off switch, motor driver, and yeah, that is the ESP8266. Yep. Just so, so and what, then what's that, this for? That mount is for the... Ah, uh, which some like kind of Arduino Nano? Uh, I'm not sure which way around it goes again, but I'm guessing it's the programming header yeah. out. So that is, oh, we can't, is that? We can't say that word anymore, can we? Oh, we can, I yeah. don't yeah. think this really? is an Arduino. I think this is just a, an Arduino Clean. compatible, which has got an uh, 80 mega 328p on it. So it's basically a, a, an Arduino Nano. Cool. By any other name. Unless that to, is an Arduino Nano. But. To be able to call it the microcontroller that cannot be named. <laughs> <laughs> just call it a 328p. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's know, just a 328p <laughs> on the breakout board. So this when <laughs> Oh, oh what's that, that is oh, what is that bit? That's the light sensors. sensors. That's the yeah, the lane follower thing. Cool. So it's got a lot of features for such a compact little robot kit and it I found it really nicely finished and quite easy to put the, together. This this pack, the way it's packaged is really nice actually. So these bits are all laser cut, um, and the, they're all held together with um, rubber bands that are hooked into little slots on the side. That's really nice. <laughs> and it's um, sufficiently modular as well. So you just plug your steppers into the main board, and you're good to go. So as far as I remember, no soldering required. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, that's for holding the pen, I presume that. But 
Or is that just uh, a little clever. front roll up, maybe? Uh, maybe. Yeah. <coughs> we'll put this together for next week and we'll, we'll have do, a little play do with a demo it. We've got yeah. one that we made earlier, but I can't remember where it was. Uh, I think it was bigger and older, the Kickstarter one, wasn't it? I can't remember. We'll have to compare This one, looks, this one looks smaller and more interesting. Anyway, it's on the shop now. Um, you can get it. Um, I think uh, Ben from Me Arm and the folks who do this are kind of getting a bit closer and just kind of hanging around with each other. So he mentioned it to us and we said, yeah, we should have that. Mm, that's good. Nice, yeah. yeah. Exceedingly nice. Oh, the toast. Super. Yeah, we forgot the toast. Toast. We forgot the toast? <sighs> yeah. What toast? Oh, no, the, the toast. toast. Oh, no. Yeah. Should we'll I have to do that next it. week. Oh, yeah. We'll leave it to next week. To be honest, we, we can't do that without John, because he's vegetarian, <laughs> so we can't have any of the toast that Les got us. So he needs to be there as the control in case we all get very sick and die. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll just be broadcasting he needs to be the decaying corpses. We'll get them and we'll leave them in the bilge tank so we don't forget. How about that? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, the EMF badge as well. It's on oh, your yeah, desk, isn't it? Is it on my desk? Do you want to slip like it, it yeah. seamlessly out? Does it slip seamlessly out? Seamlessly <laughs> whipped. Mm, yes. So yeah, EMF was good. So EMF is the biannual uh, hacker camp in the UK. And this year it was held in Guildford. And there was about 1,700 people there all doing things like forging aluminium, making titanium sporks, making rings, hacking, and loads of talks on great subjects. Um, the next one's in 2018 now, so get in early because the tickets sold out way ahead of the um, event. One thing they do every year is make a badge, an insane badge. And we're just going to take a look around what the badge was this year because it almost didn't happen, but then kind of some good big name sponsors well, well, popped in. It's, I can see why it almost didn't happen because it's almost too complicated well they, they don't want to charge well, people for the yeah. badges extra after they've paid you know 90 100 quid for a ticket um so they have people like microsoft stepped up this year and i think uh, st micro um stepped in there as well to sponsor the um what do you call it yeah the uh, cpu on it the microcontroller do you want to switch it on it might just have a little battery there's a slide switch on the top near the lanyard so it's got a screen on it, it's got a joystick, it's got two buttons. And an app store. I seem to like yeah. glean from Twitter that people were actually building apps, uploading them to the app store. Yeah, the Wi-Fi was getting a bit caned mm -hmm. by um, loads and loads of these devices connecting to it simultaneously. Hello. Why has it gone upside down? <laughs> uh, Wait, it's got a, a come on, accelerometer to figure out which way up it's going. Oh. No, I've just, I've okay. just turned it upside down. Yeah, and it had the battery in it. Maybe you need to LCD rotate. The buttons are really nice. It had a near pixel on, but that was the wrong way around. So as soon as you turn the badge on, that went pop. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's very much EMF camp, you know. <laughs> Trying to make a hardware project like this is is pretty ambitious. Okay. Um, this year it was it was a really massive improvement. It was just such a slick event. Um, let's have a look on the back. See what we've got there. Oh, uh, okay, I apologise for laughing. Hardware is hard. Yeah, so the back's got uh, a yeah, battery. Funny. It's got a LiPo battery. It's got um, the processor, which is some, some it's kind a pretty of, honking processor. Some kind of arm. Uh, so it's an STM, isn't it? STM thirty-two L four seven five. Yep, it's got the SD slot there. It's got the micro USB slot for charging. Got a piezo sounder or transducer rather. There, the big black thing. There. Which, yeah, I don't know if anyone's got sounding, but look around for what people are doing to hack the badge, because people will be tweeting about it under the EMF camera um, hashtag. What's on the other side? <coughs> the ribbon connected to the screen, which was sorry, no, the other oh, end of that yeah, side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got the sponsors there, so yeah, ST Texas Instruments. Uh, Microsoft, HDD, and MicroPython. It runs MicroPython. Probably should have mentioned that first. That's, that's how people were doing the apps. And then it's got the Wi-Fi module, which will be a TI part, probably, won't it? If their names uh, are there. Let's have a look. <laughs> if they're sponsored. <laughs> uh, do they do an uh, integrated Wi-Fi thing? Do ST? I don't should probably look that up. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah it doesn't actually see it, it just says... 
got some kind of logo on it that I'm not altogether sure mm. what it is. But, but the whole thing was Ace, and next year there is one in the Netherlands called something. <laughs> <Some hack work. laughs> People have been talking about That's it. Descriptive. So if you're looking for a massive hack camp to swap ideas, meet like minded people, oh. go to the Netherlands next year. Woo! Got, cool. We've got an error. Yeah, you will have. I think you would say it was hard coded. It's Wi Fi. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's a Wi Fi thing in it that connects to the EMF Wi Fi, which obviously is not oh, here. Yeah, the wi- yeah. Can you change the Wi Fi that it connects to? to yeah, you, you edit you one can do file. Yeah. Anything, can you? There's one file you can edit, and that will yeah, Sweet. change that. Cool. This has definitely been improved. You can already <laughs> feel the difference. Refined. From, yeah, refined from the last time I put it together. Cool. No screws? No, totally tall. Well, there's a couple of bolts, but they don't appear to have anything that they go into. I'm sure they were just for aligning the pieces and keeping them nice and tidy in the box. Right. Char, that's it. Char 2017. Thank you, Cap. Cool. Char. So, Netherlands, Char 2017. In, yeah. Then the year after that, it's EMF again. Then it's probably Chaos Computer Camp. What Char? <coughs> totally lost the plot with all of this. I don't know. Mm. Is that as an encryption? Is that the? No, I don't think it's actually related to that. No, it's just confusing. It's just a, it's a hacker camp. It's like EMF. It's not necessarily electromagnetic. That's true. It's good camping. Yeah, but the Chaos Computer Congress as well comes every four years. Not necessarily That's the chaos. chaos. Um, yeah, and they they just interleave themselves quite nicely, which is good. Right, I think that's all we've got for this week. So thanks for tuning in to the return of Sanity. <laughs> Although I, I, I finally watched the stream from last week and it was really good. So. Once, we, once we got going... <laughs> once you, once you got funny. going and realised you were actually live, yeah, everything <laughs> got a lot better. Yeah, it was just a bit touch and go. It's, it's like just watching you take control and just get on with it. It was just like, oh, the babies have grown up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right, thanks for tuning in, folks, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and Facebook. Oh, See yeah, you soon. Facebook. Bye. 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 Bye.